Greetings and salutations to all my G8 slash General Hospital fans. So, before I get started, I want to give a shout out to Brock TV. Um, he gave me a shout out in one of his videos, and I got some new subs and some new views. So, I just want to sit there and say thank you, and thanks for the, um, you know, people who are watching and new subs. Appreciate it. He's also a great reviewer. He does scenes from A to, a to Z. Um, he's really great and very just well planned out in his videos. So, thank you. Um, so going into this episode, let's start off with, let's start off with Alexis and, um, Julian. So, after Alexis had her second drink, which is really odd because I could have swore it might have been more, but, um, after her second drink, or as she was going to get her second drink, um, she called up Julian. And Julian picks her up, and Julian is pretty much like, so, why are you drinking? I mean, he didn't say it like that, but he was basically asking, like, you know, what made you drink? And Sam, um, Alexa's was like, well, you know, I had, a blow I had a blowout with our daughter. And um, before I really get into the whole thing, um, let's backtrack to yesterday's episode. Where Sam was like, I used to look up to you, I used to admire you, I wanted to be like you. And I'm sitting there thinking, when? When? When did you ever actually want to be like Alexa's? Hell, you couldn't stand her in the beginning. You want to be nothing like her. And hell, you even you even try to sabotage her relationship with her husband by trying to, to seduce him. So at what point did you actually want to be like her? I, I, maybe I missed something. Um, if you know when that happened, um, leave a comment at the bottom. But that comment literally came out of left field. So, um, yeah, so she talks about the whole blow up and everything like that and how she didn't fight for Neo and how she felt like Sam was kind of right about the whole thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, that was pretty much about it. Um, except for the simple fact that Julian says something and Alexis took a cheap shot at him by reminding him of the time that he kidnapped her and put a knife to her throat. And I'm sitting there thinking, you do realize that he didn't have to pick you up, right? You probably shouldn't be, you probably shouldn't be sitting there trying to throw cheap shots at people who are coming towards your aid at your time of need. Um, and I'll just, I'll just leave it at that point. Now, let's get to Nell and her being just really annoyed. And granted, it does stem from somewhere, but it's still just really stupid. And I'm trying not to curse, but now just gets me to a point where I'm just like, I don't know what's going to fly out of my mouth. Um, with that being said, Nell's reason for why she doesn't want to have surgery on Wiley is because of her own misgivings of what happened to her during her surgery. And how she lives through chronic pain, this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. Now, my whole thing is like, you made this about you. You aren't even seeing a bigger picture of what this could do for your son. You're so busy thinking about all the stuff that happened to you, all the bad stuff that happened to you, that you want to project your fears and your worries onto your son. And that is only part one of why she doesn't want the surgery to happen. And the reason why I say that is because after Michael is just like, alright, you know what, F this, I'm going to go downstairs, I'm going to talk to the doctors and try to come up with some alternative plan. He runs into Carly and tells Carly about the whole situation. And Carly's just like, you know what? You stay here. Hold my beer. I'll be right back. So Carly talks to, um, well, Carly argues with Nell at first. And then she tries to play to her, you know, to her advantage. And at first it works because she's like, listen, if you do this, if you sign this consent form, you can probably get some people on your side and this can work out in your favor. And that's when she was going to consider doing it. I'm like, wow. And then she's like, no. No. Because you're not going to win. You're not going to win. And I was like, are you kidding me? Are, are, you, are you serious? Did she really just say that? You're not going to... That's... <laughs> that's okay. So that's what you're concerned about. You're more concerned about Carly winning 
and saving your own son's life. Man, I'm not going to lie. Jerry's right. What the hell are you doing with her? I get that she's supposed to be a villain, but you are taking this villain-ish way too far. Um. Anyway, after she does her whole temper tantrum, about she's not going to win this and the third. Carly's like, all right, F it. Here you go. Here's the consent form. You do what you want. Carly leaves, and then she closes the door. Which, by the way, I can only imagine that being a fire, a fire hazard, but um, she leaves Nell upstairs, and Nell is kicking and screaming, talking about open this door, blah, 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 and whatever. Um, so that pretty much ends Nell's scene. Um, let's talk about Cam and his session with Neil. So, what it really came down to, that he, he has a session with her, and he has a session with Neil, and Cam pretty much opens up at the wall and says, the reason why this is bothering me so much is not just the simple fact that I almost died, but me feeling like a coward. Because, you know, he ran while Trina was still there. And I'm not going to lie, at first I was like, bro, are you, you really just going to... But then I stopped and I thought about it after a while. I was like, it was the, it was the smart play to do. Um, Neil reminded... Neil reminded Cam of the fact that he came back with Jason and Curtis unarmed. And he didn't actually have to do that. And that was bravery in itself. So with that being said, um, you know, he agreed to go and do more sessions. And, um, you know, Liz was happy about that. And it worked out for Liz. But let's be fair, you know. Liz didn't really ask, you know, Cam if he wanted to do therapy. She pretty much kind of forced him to do that. And which was a little ironic was that when, you know, during her whole, you know, after the whole rape thing, um, you know, she didn't go to a, a, she didn't talk to a therapist either. She talked to her friends to actually help her open up a little bit. And then she went to a therapist. So why she didn't do that with Cam, I just, yeah, um, Anyway, um, moving on, <laughs> Jocelyn and Trina have a talk, and, um, you know, at first, Trina dodges around the questions of, you know, why is Cam acting so weird, because Trina's like, oh, well, he's being very weird, and Jocelyn's like, well, how's he being weird? Uh, he keeps texting me all the time, yeah, he keeps texting me. Okay, Trina, um, sure. And so, you know, Trina's like, yo, listen, do you have any feelings for Cameron? And Jocelyn's like, listen, we grew up together. We've been friends. We're just going to be friends. Now, I feel kind of bad for Trina to some extent because I feel like she just turns out to be the consolation prize. And since she's, you know, she can't get with Dev and she can't get with fucking Cam, it's like, what the hell? She's going to get resentful of um, Jocelyn. But yeah, that was pretty much just a gist of the talk. And, um... So, during that whole... Before the before the whole therapy session... I mean, like, during the whole therapy session with um Cam... Liz and Nicholas talk. And, um... You know, they have a good heart-to-heart -heart about it. You know, just talking about how Nicholas is one of the people that did help... Liz through that ordeal and I, I'm just on a side note um they showed like there was one episode a couple a couple years ago that they showed like flashbacks of the aftermath of her rape and I gotta tell you that was probably the most disturbing thing I've ever seen in a soap opera in my entire life and um so you know when he's when she said like listen you helped me through that part of my life that really that that meant something you know um and i feel like she's starting to throw out with throw out with nicholas to be honest i really do um i know she wants to continue being upset with him but it's like somebody who wants to be upset with someone even though that they're starting to not be upset if that makes any sense but um yeah, um, other than that, Mike was brought into the hospital from turning Woods because of something that happened to his wrist. I guess it's sprained, but they thought it was broken. And it has a lot to do with the, um, the Alzheimer's, of him not being able to communicate with the staff. 
that let people know that there's something going on with his, his wrist and uh, Portia is taking over the case. I guess this is a way to kind of like further integrate her character into the show. And I'm trying to like her despite her whole issues with um, Ava. Speaking of Ava, the last scene. Um, well, sort of next to the last scene. So Ava and, Fra and Franco talk. And, you know, Ava is pretty much like... I don't know how I can sit there and help Trina where I can even really do much for my daughter and I pretty much kind of, you know, took jabs at her whenever I can actually get it in. And Franco was like, yeah, I'm not going to lie, you weren't exactly the uh, mother of the year, but despite your misgivings, you know, Kiki turned out to be a very strong woman, you know, very courageous and very... You know, just full of life and things of that nature. And so, despite what she did, it made her stronger. And so he was like, listen, Trina is lucky to actually have you as a mentor. And I thought that was nice. And, um, you know, even Ava thought that was nice. And it, it sucks because Ava doesn't seem like she has a lot of good... doesn't seem like she has any good friends because, you know, that was a very genuine, kind-hearted compliment. And she doesn't seem like she gets those too many days. And it's just like... Wow, I mean, it's, if it's not from her brother, then maybe Scotty? <laughs> if it's not from Scotty, then, um, yeah. So, that was pretty much that whole scene with Franco and um, Ava while he was painting her portrait or whatever. And, um, moving on. So, last scene, I'm kind of looking at my cheat sheet. Last scene is with Anna and Finn. And I gotta be honest, they didn't really talk about anything that was... Well, they didn't really talk about anything that mattered. Hmm. Excuse me. They didn't really talk about too much stuff that mattered. Except for the fact that Britt came in there and came into the office. And, um... Well, okay, that's not true. Britt had something to say about Neil about as far as, like, he looked familiar. And so I wonder if that's going to come into play. Because he kept saying, she kept on saying, oh, you look so familiar. Where do I, say, where do I know you from? But, um, yeah, I feel like that's going to come down the line as far as, like, that playing out. But, uh, yeah, Britt came in there and told, An um, told Anna, <laughs> told Anna that, you know, she's become closer with Peter. And, um, you know, she agrees with Anna that, uh, you know, the charges are real. And that she agrees on the charges. And I'm just like, wow, I get that your mother has screwed you over like numerous amount of times and grant that she does belong in jail. But for you to sit there and just not even bother to give her the benefit of doubt on that, it just it it, it literally I, I just I don't know how to feel about it. You know, part of it makes no sense, and part of it is just like her just one and part part of it makes no sense because it just doesn't. But then part of it just makes me feel like she just... She doesn't want to, like, believe that her mother could be, you know... Like, not guilty. Because then she actually would have to, you know, put in the work and stuff like that. Like, she doesn't want to get involved with the mother. So, if her mother is in jail and those charges are those charges, then it's... Alright, whatever. You know? Um... But, um, yeah, so, it's just one of those things, she, she just wants to wash her hands from it, and plus she's on parole, and if she gets, you know, if she gets involved with her mother's mess, and it backfires, she can wind up going back to jail again, so, I, part of me wants to sit there and be like, you know what, at least with her, I can understand that, because, you know, her freedom is on the line, but this whole thing just doesn't make any sense. But, whatever. It is what it is. Um. And, yeah, that's, I mean, honestly, tell you too, besides that, it's just Anna and Finn talking about nothing. Like, they didn't really actually have anything important to say. And it was a lot of fluff, um, between those scenes with them. You know, at least the scenes with Michael and, um, Sonny, you know, they matter because it matters to us next episode. And... It was just, you know, just a genuine, good, 
dare I even sit there and say it, um, this is us moment. This is us kind of moment. Because, you know, Michael was sitting there, you know, congratulating Sonny pretty much, or congratulating Sonny on the fact that Sonny is still looking out for his father despite, you know, his father just being very an absentee dad. And, you know, with that being said, he's still looking out for Mike. He still managed to raise um, Michael very well. So, you know, it was just a good scene. And, you know, granted, I would almost sit there and say it went nowhere. But in the previous, in the next scene, um, I mean, the next episode, they are going to talk about Mike and what's going on with him. So, I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. I think that's pretty much about it. I got the bird. But, um, yeah. So, thank you for watching this review. Um, thank you for subbing. And thank you again, Brock TV, for, um, giving me a shout out. You know, um, really appreciate it. Thank you. And... So yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, have a good day or good night, depending on what time and when you're watching this. Have a fun and safe weekend. And, um, you know, I will catch you in the next review.